It is six in the morning. And it just got light enough that I feel like it's pretty safe. This is my bike. This is the bike I bought when I was 22. I had just come home from my mission and they had allowed us sisters to have bikes. Which, if you've never ridden a bike with a skirt on, a long skirt, <laughs> you've never lived. Um, it's an adventure. So, when I got home, um, I was really not feeling very well and um, was trying to find some way to feel alive and independent. And so for me, that meant getting a bike. And I've bought more expensive bikes since then. But I always come back to this one because it's, um, I don't know, it's just comfortable. It's not fast. It's slow, but it's comfortable. So, because I don't have blinkers on, I'm going to ride on the opposite side of the road so that I can see cars coming. And every morning I come out to ride my bike, I forget that what I wanted to bring was earplugs. Be this morning. It's down in the 40s at night, and I should have worn a thicker sweater. Um, you'll notice I'm wearing spandex. Never been someone for wearing spandex. I don't think they're very modest. Um, but for exercising and for if you're already struggling with motion, if you already feel like, oh, I don't want to move, I just feel so stiff, I don't want to do anything, if you already kind of feel like that, I would try wearing spandex. Um, or something else besides jeans, something thinner, something stretchy. Just because I find Sorry, usually I go for my bike ride without talking the whole time. Um, usually I find that if I wear spandex, I'm much more likely to get up and go do what I need to do. And also I find that if I want to just stop and do some exercise, like some yoga, because my hips are feeling tight, or I feel like my wrists have seized up a little bit from my knitting, I find that if I'm wearing spandex, I feel like I can just drop and do it instead of having to go and change my clothes. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case in winter. <laughs> um, in winter, I generally wear my spandex under my clothes, just as a second layer for doing chores. Anyway, so the reason I want to talk about this is that usually when I ride my bike, my feet are like a duck and they point out. But I've been um, reading Ego Skew is another book that ties in pretty good with the Qigong. Uh, showing imbalance in your body and that pain stems from the wrong muscle doing um, your movement for you. Compensating for muscles that have turned off because of the way that you use them. And so I'm working very hard on making sure that my toes track forward and that according to Qigong that my feet plant a root in the ground, send a spike down into the earth every time I walk or move anything, that I'm grounding myself and aligning myself with gravity. It's all very difficult and I find that just walking mindfully can actually make me a little sore. So on top of that, I have been doing a lot of yoga so that um, once my unused muscles start to feel tight, I don't feel a turn off for doing my exercises that I really want to do because I'm in pain and so every time I do an extensive workout then 
that 12 hours later, I will do a, a, a series of yoga poses. And the ones that I like is yoga with Adrienne. I love her. She's very slow, down to earth, not like hippie, weird hippie yoga. I really love her. She has lots and lots of poses. And I don't like to do inverted or hurried poses on my wrists. You see the deer? I don't know if you can see him. Um, because with all my knitting and everything else that I do, I have not been as kind to them as I could have been. So I'm a little careful about what I do with my wrists. But once a week, the reason I would be sore is that I love kickboxing. Um, I love it because I don't have to remember complicated steps and most of the motions are large muscle group. I'm not having to dance around over a step. I'm not having to, I don't know. <laughs> most like dance aerobic stuff makes me feel kind of prancy and not like I'm doing a whole lot of good. I don't really like aerobic activities. I like large muscle group activities. So, I really like yoga. I really, really like kickboxing. And they only offer the early morning kickboxing once a week, and that one's at 5.30. And um, uh, the rest of the week, it's like at 8.30 in the morning or at like 7.30 at night. I don't like to be gone at night because it's the only time I get to see Mr. Dirt. But, I really, really, really love the kickboxing. It feels good to me. It feels like um, my static positions where I'm not moving enough are completely fixed by going to kickboxing because you have those kicks where you open your hips up wide and tilt to the side and it just feels so good to me because I walk in a straight line. I move in a straight line most of the time. Bucking hay, you're not opening your legs up and getting into deep bends, you're pretty much standing up straight and just heaving. With the exception of my goat milking yoga, I don't get to open my hips up much. So I just love the kickboxing with the uh, jumping jacks and everything like that. Now that being said, I couldn't always do it. My strength has increased a ton since we've been on the farm. As far as just strength, um, how much muscle I have, um, but now I feel like because of all the work I'm doing on the farm, I'm kind of seizing up a little bit, like I'm getting stiff and old before my time, and that's why I have really enjoyed these other alternative ways of exercising. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to gain back some mobility because, like I said, um, with those six months of months of sitting in the chair uh, knitting the sweaters, I had started to feel like I'd aged 30 years. And now that I have all the animals in the backyard, I don't have so much actual physical labor to do so much worry and so I feel like I can go and invest some energy and some time <coughs> pardon me in doing these other activities that I really love and you can see how stinking slow I am um, I have a mountain bike it's really light and really fast but I had to lean so far onto my wrists that it almost instantly messes up my wrists for about a week, at least. And then I can't um, do much of anything. So I'm on my slow, heavy bike, and it just has to be good enough. Because what I'm trying to do is increase mobility. And again, I'm not trying to lose weight. My goal here is absolutely not to lose weight. I, I don't actually want to lose weight. Um, I feel like that can become a self-defeating task 
and I know that my muscle mass is a lot greater than it was when I was really skinny. And so that's not my, not what I'm going for. I just found that I would sit in my chair and feel like I couldn't get up and like the only thing I could do was my knitting because I felt like I just didn't have the energy just to do daily tasks. So I went and invested in a five quart tea kettle so that I can make my tea all at once and set it up for the day so that I know that I won't be getting dehydrated because a really big part of not having any energy is not being hydrated. You can't eliminate properly if you're not hydrated and your organs start to suffer. You can't eliminate toxins and when you can't eliminate toxins they build up in your system so first off lots and lots of water. Um, second off even though I don't really like to wear spandex especially in public I'm wearing spandex every day so that when some soreness hits me or some lethargy I can just drop and do just a little bit of yoga um, and for those of you who aren't up to that point yet I have found that I needed to stop asking my kids to um, retrieve things for me I needed to if I needed a basket I needed to go get it myself if um, if I was feeling a little blue, I needed to go get a drink of water. And then I needed to do a little bit of yoga.